Okay, so what we're gonna do today is, we've got a problem with the back brake. In fact, we've got a problem with both brakes. The problem being, they are drum brakes. Now, best thing to do with drum brakes is throw them in bin and fit disc, but we don't have that option because we don't have that kind of budget for this project. Drum brakes are brilliant if you're bored with life. They are really, really fast. They're fastest way to the scene of the accident and a big crash and hospital. So what we are gonna do is just make these brakes serviceable. On the back brake, when I did, when I test rode it, what I did notice is the, the rear brake is sticking on. So it's just, well, I'm not even sure if it's on now. It's not on now, it's turning. But, there we go. All right, now it moves. But you can see it's not letting it return. You see it moving there, look. When you lift it up, it's reached its maximum. The spring's not pushing it back anymore. So when you, pre when you press the brake, it sticks down. There you go, stuck on, look and it won't return. Oh, stuck. There's a couple of reasons for this. It can either just be that, hi old Bill, you all right mate? It could be just dry inside, it could be all dirt in there, it could be gr uh, no grease on it, no lubrication. Get down look, go on. Good boy, I'll put heater on for you. Or it could be that the brake line's low, and the cam that operates it, that pushes the shoes apart, is turning too far before it gets chance to return with the springs. So if it, it's, it's shaped like this, let's just say the, this is the cam that's moving. The brake shoes are shaped like that. And when it turns, it forces the brake shoes apart. But then if it goes too far, you let go of your brake, they just stay there. It can't turn, it can't turn. There's no spring action to come back. So it'll just sit there. Now what it needs to do is just turn so far so that brake shoes work and then it returns with the spring like that. That's how it works. I'll show you more in a minute. So it's either lubrication or your shoes have wore out basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip all the back of this down, repair the brakes and change the rear tyre. First time I've seen a bike of this kind of size have a cush drive on it. It's got a cush drive system on it. I've never seen one on a 100cc bike before. Uh, granted, this is not my era. This is going back before I was born when this bike was made. So, probably venture a bit more. up the bench, pump it up while your wheels are falling and your bench is rising now I am showing my age right so time to open it up and find out what the problem is oh, for a start there'll be a big lip on the outside of the drum yeah there is so that's going to take some prizing off uh, due to the organisation of my workshop, I don't have a pry bar. So, the bolster chisel will work. No, it won't. It just won't. The screwdriver it is then. Recording studios do, and it winds the dog up. Alright, so there's the problem. Problem is, cam's already quarter turned. 
So, there you go. Oh, it's so stiff. Oh, the cam's all ready. That's its resting point. So, if you can see that. You can see how nasty that is. It's completely covered in rust. So that's going to be rusted solid inside. And that's going to be why bike brakes dragging. Oh, we've got a spider's nest in there as well. Beautiful. It's exactly what you want. See, this is why drum brakes work so well. And when I say well, I mean terrible because they hold everything in that you don't need for braking. So they hold in heat because there's nowhere for the heat to go. So they'll overheat and let you down. And then if you don't maintain them every fortnight, they'll be full of dirt. And the dirt can't go anywhere because it's inside a drum. And then they hold in water, which turns the dirt into mud, which may as well be grease. So you've greased your brakes. And that's exactly what you want in all situations. You want greased brakes. So if you want to find your way to scene of an accident, use drum brakes. So yeah, let's get these stripped down, freed off. I might actually make a decision on if I'm going to use those brake shoes or not. They'll do 500 miles, and that's the object. They've got to do 500 miles around Scotland, and then that's it. You need to put a serviceable tyre on and make that move. All right, let's take the pry bar, stroke screwdriver. Whoop these shoes off. Shoes don't really look too bad, apart from the spider's nest, obviously. Where's the problem? Oh, this cam is completely seized up. I'm sure if we hit it hard enough, we can get it to move, but let's just clean it up. And we'll get it lubricated, see if we can get it moving. That's all it takes. So a little bit of WD-40. That's not what WD-40 were made for, by the way. You know what WD-40 were actually made for? It's in the name. Water displacement 40 times. It was because he tried 40 times to make something that would displace water. So it could have been called WD-20. It's on half his catcher. And there you go. A bit of WD-20 and we've got it like new but what we will do is because WD-40 isn't a lubricant so we'll get this stripped down we'll knock the cam out and we'll lube up the shaft on the back of it damn versatile is brake cleaner. Top tip, clean your windows with brake cleaner. You can clean absolutely everything with it. Degreasers, 
it cleans, it dusts, leaves nothing behind. It's cheap. The only thing is, it eats up anything you try and use to squirt it out. If anybody has figured anything out that's not a thousand pounds, leave us a comment. I wonder if it might be a good time to actually say that we transport motorbike. That's what we do for a living. We don't do this for a living. So, if anybody wants any motorcycle transport in national, England, Scotland, Wales, bit of Northern Ireland, leave a link in the description. That's what pays the bills. If you like and comment enough, this might pay the bills. I just might be able to do this for a living, which is like, it's every man's dream. This is, if you, this is what I do for a hobby. This is my passion. And if I can do that and earn money at the same time, then that's absolutely awesome. So like and comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Because only 4% of people who are watching and regularly watch are subscribed. What are you doing? Just subscribe. I mean, you don't have to. I don't really care if you do. But definitely like and comment because that puts us out to other people who like the same kind of crap that you do, which is crazy because it's the same kind of crap that I do. Five script carriage, love you, Derek. So let's rebuild the brakes. We've got some copper slip. Copper slip isn't grease, it's anti seize compound. It's not meant to lubricate at all, it's meant to just prevent seizures. And it's high temperature, which is brilliant for brakes. So I'm using a little bit of grease just on the pivot because that actually does need proper lubrication, not just anti seize. A little dab of grease on that, a little dab of grease on the hole. Perfect exactly what we want from the cam. And we've got the shoes put back together. I am going to use the same, the original shoes, just because I don't know if you can see that. I if the light's good enough. But they aren't that bad. They're not bad at all. So now you can probably see a bit better what I was talking about earlier. When you press the brake, brake pedal pulls this along with the rod, which turns that cam just there, opens it up, forces the shoes onto the inside of the drum. And if it goes too far and it's not lubricated enough, oh, there you go. And that's what happens if your brake shoes are really, really worn down. It over rotates and then can't return. And a little bit of pressure, boom, away it goes. So with a tire, this tire's so old and decrepit, I don't even think it's sat on the rim at all. So I should just be able to push it straight off. So get the valve out. Lubrication, again. Lubrication is important, getting the tire off and on again. So what I'll use is Umiguli juice. Now you can buy this on our website. <laughs> no you can. Soap and water. But don't use fairy liquid. Fairy liquid contains salt. All right, and when you've got a tube in, you should always start and end at the valve. So like I said, we don't need to press it off of the bead because this tire looks so old and it's a tube type anyway, so we won't really need it. All right, so what you need to do is, you need to press the tire down into the channel of the rim. It just gives you more free play at the edge that you're trying to take off. Now, now you've got the lever in. 
press it down there, you should see it drop into the channel. But bottom. Horrible thing about fitting tube tires is nipping the tube. It's so easy to do. Again, use plenty of soap, it makes it a tad easier. Have it. Now usually when you get to this stage, I'm used to doing trials bike tires. And by the time you get to this stage, because they're so soft and they're quite new, they just literally fall off. You can do it, take them off and put them on without using levers most of the time. But this is so old. This has got to be a 30 year old tire. It's rock hard. The rust on the rim. That's one side done. Back off the front brake. We're going to remove the front wheel. Ugh, that's all. That's the wrong lever for for this bike. It's not a problem. Probably just get a new set of levers anyway. So disconnect the cable at the top. Cable looks in nice condition to be fair. For an old bike like this. Nice and free. A bit more pump up the jam. Twelve, thinking twelve. No, right. These aren't original, and I'll tell you why these aren't original. Because Japanese people are quite superstitious, so they won't have a size thirteen nut or bolt out of the factory. That may be bro science. I'm not entirely sure about it, but I was told that a long time ago, and I have no reason to believe it's not true. Let me know what you think. There you go, right. Mooey. I think we're going to replace these bearings. Brakes and everything look in pretty decent condition, but them bearings are just making too much horrible noise. I can just show you what has happened to them. I don't know how, but it looks absolutely horrendous. And the sound of them might not come out on camera or through the sound, but they're quite grumbly. So we'll replace them. We want them to definitely do 500 miles. So for now, let's get this tire off. Right, this front wheel's got a security bolt. Oh, it doesn't. No, it doesn't have a security bolt in it. So this wheel doesn't have a security bolt. So I think what we'll do is we'll buy one of them and fit it. I'm not sure why someone's taking it out. That's it. Couple of things, point of contact. You can't really mess around with point of contact. So the tires need to be inflated no matter what condition they're in. These bikes aren't going to be getting up to speed. We're not going to be doing silly things on them. We're just going to be touring. Probably 40, 50 miles an hour most. We want to appreciate Scotland. Oh God. This tire is so cracked and dry. Oh, I can hear the tire cracking as I'm doing it, as I'm sliding it off the rim. Oh, 
I certainly suffer in America. That's all I can say. That's nasty. Rim's not bad. Needs a new rim tape. Uh, we'll get ourselves over to Sid Smith tomorrow. Get that sorted. Some new bearings. Blind bearing puller kit. And I couldn't find it. I don't know why, I must be blind. Last time I used this blowtorch, it tried to kill me. Yeah, like that. Hey, right, hopefully. Stupid. There you go. It took us a bit of heat. Perfect. Pull the spacer out. Two bearings out. So that's it for this episode. We're just waiting for a few parts. So uh, in the next episode, we're gonna be chopping open the exhaust and finding out what's blocking up that. So make sure you join us for that one. If you haven't subscribed already and you've not liked and commented, go and do that now. Cheers guys.